Hi, this is Charlie Sutterfield. This is a discussion about system families versus component families within Revit. And this is part of a series of uh, videos that I'm putting together um, to help firms who might want to roll out uh, Revit within their, their operations and need to set up office standards and best practices and things like that. So uh, I'm going to go into the um, project template that I started earlier in this series. I can get there a couple of different ways. Um, I can hit the open button here and that will take me into um, a dialog box where I can go to my documents and slide down to Revit Office Standards was the folder that I created for it and within there we've got this um, Charlie project template and so that's what I'm going to open. I'm just going to double click on that the other way that I could have gotten there would have been under the purple R to recent um, recent projects. So here I am. I'm into my project template. And so the first thing that I want to do is show you what the uh, component families look like. So if I click uh, component here, it uh, the first thing it says is that I haven't put in a tag for lighting fixtures and I'm going to say uh, no, I don't care about that right now. But then I'm going to go and grab a component just to stick it in my model here and I'm going to put in a desk so I clicked on the drop down there so that I can go into the component selector and the component that I'm going to select is desk so I just click once on it and then notice it's on my cursor and I'm going to stick it kind of here in the middle of my project uh, right now it just looks like a, a rectangle I'm going to click escape twice to get out of that place component command and I'm going to switch my view to 3D just to show you uh, what it's looking like so I'm going to click on the little house up there in the shortcuts bar and there's my component it's a uh, desk if I click on it to select it it turns it transparent blue I'm going to click uh, shaded down here in my view controls uh, my graphic display options uh, just so it's got a little life to it and I can spin it around and look at it and all that kind of stuff. But it's a discrete thing. You know, I just had to click one time to get my um, component to place. And uh, I could have clicked multiple times. If I go back to my level one plan and I click on component again, it uh, remembers that I was placing desks. And so I can place more desks. It'll give me uh, some inference lines so that I can place them in a nice pattern if I want to. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, as many times as I click, I place a desk. Well, system families work a little bit differently. Um, system families require more information. I have to do more than just click one time to get into a system family and have it actually place something. So let's take a look at uh, where these things reside, and then we'll take a look at where system families reside. So one way we might do that is just to uh, try to load a different component. So I'm going to go back to the um, drop down selector here and I want to try to load something that isn't in um, my selection right now. I want to have to go to the library to get it. So to do that I'm going to click on this load family button over here on the right hand end of this ribbon and that's going to open the Imperial library for me and I'm uh, automatically in my components. All of my um, folders are here. I was placing desks which happen to be furniture so I'm going to go ahead and open that folder just to show you where it is. I'm going to slide down in that selector and desk is right there and that's the desk that I was placing so um, you know that's where it lives and it's already been loaded into my project. Well let's uh, grab something that isn't in my project already uh, so it's not in my, not in my template. Um, let's make it this entertainment center. That looks very different from my desk. So I click once on that and then click the open button and give it a minute to generate and now I can start placing entertainment centers in my project to my heart's content. And again just one click. I'm going to click twice on my escape button on my keyboard to get out of that place entertainment center command and uh, zoom out just a little bit. Um, so those are, are components, those are um, component families. Uh, the family just means that I've got different selections. So like for this um, entertainment center, I've got two different sizes that I can use. For the desk, I've got three different sizes, uh, that kind of thing. So um, family just means that I've got more than one of them and they're, they're housed in that library. So a system family is a little bit different. System families are 
something where I have to give it more commands or more information to get it to do what I want it to do. So for instance, a floor. So I'm going to go back to my level one plan. So I go to my project browser, double click on level one. There's all that stuff that I've been placing. And so I want to put a floor underneath all of this. So I need to tell it exactly where I want that floor to go. So up on my home tab, under floor, there's a drop down and I can just click on that top one there. I've got options for floor, structural floor, and floor by face. Uh, the one that's going to work for me is going to be just floor. So I click on floor. It puts me into a sketch mode. So I have to tell it um, where my boundaries are for my floor. I'm going to use this tool, which is, I need to draw this, so I need to use this tool, or I'm going to use this tool, which is a rectangle tool, which allows me to make um, a box and those pink lines that I just drew represent the edges of my floor. And uh, my properties type over here, um, my property is a uh, four inch concrete slab. I can click that drop down and change it to something else if I want to. But I'm just going to leave it what it is. Um, it's going to come in on uh, level one. It's doing that because I was drawing on level one, so it assumes that's where I want it to be. And I think that's all good, so I'm going to go ahead and click the finish green check mark, and there it is. It's blue because it's selected. If I click outside of that blue area, now it's unselected. Go down here to my view controls and my display options and click shaded, and now I can see it's a gray concrete floor. Uh, go back to a 3D view, and there it is. So what's different about that than um, placing these desks and entertainment centers is that I had to create those pink lines. And as I move those pink lines and edit this floor, it changes. Right? I can't do that as easily with these components. These components are one thing, I set them in place, and I move on. So I've got this thing going on with the floor. Let's take a look at another system family, which will be walls. So I'm going to go back to the floor plan because it's just easier to place walls when I'm looking uh, directly at the, the, the 2D view. So I'm going to double click on level one. And on level one, I'm going to place walls around the outside of my uh, floor here. So I'm going to use the wall tool, which is right here on my home ribbon, that drop down. Again, I've got wall, structural wall, wall by face. Uh, the command that I'm going to use is just wall. So I click once on that. Now I'm in that sketch mode again. It wants me to tell it where I want my walls to go. This time, I'm going to use um, a tool over here, my drawing palette, called pick lines. Uh, and then that'll let me just pick on the four edges of my concrete slab to place my walls. I'm going to use um, a more complicated wall because I want to show you how it works. So I'm going to use this drop down selector here and I'm going to change this wall type from basic generic 8 inch to uh, brick on metal stud. That'll work. And then when I'm using the pick lines tool or actually any of the drawing tools, I've got this location line. So when I draw it's assuming that I'm going to draw where I want the center line of my wall to be. And uh, for this instance, that's not what I want. I want to use that drop down selector and change that to core face exterior. And just bear with me and I'll show you why I'm going to do that here in a minute. So I've got that selected. Now I just have to click on my four walls. And now I'm, I'm sorry, on my four edges and now I've got four walls. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and turn on fine detail uh, so that I can see that yes indeed I do have a wall there. I'm going to change this uh, graphic display option here. Um, right now I've got thick lines selected. That's the default. I'm going to go up here to my shortcuts ribbon and toggle that to thin lines. And notice that now I can see my jip board that happens in my wall assembly. Um, I couldn't see it before because of the, the bold line that was there, which architecturally is, is correct. Um, but from monitoring where you are in Revit, you may want to do something else. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And then let me show you what I meant by placing this thing on the um, core face exterior. I'm going to draw a little section through one of these walls. So I'm going to just grab this section tool and just draw a little quick section right there at the, the north wall. Click escape a couple of times to get out of the place section command and then double click on the section head to open the section. I'm going to turn on 
fine detail and shaded in my view controls. So what I'm looking at here is that wall, the blue guy is now the wall, and the floor slab. It's now blue, now it's not. And um, Revit thinks that core is the same as uh, what an architect might refer to as structure. And so the exterior face of core is the exterior edge of the um, metal stud in this wall assembly. And so that's what it aligned with the edge of the slab. So it did what I wanted it to do, um, and we'll do a video later on where we get into uh, editing the wall type and breaking it apart, so maybe I needed to pull the uh, brick down further and things like that, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. So one of my basic um, instructions early on in this video was that you know we can, we can place these components um, just by clicking once. Well, I just placed walls by clicking once as well. So what's the deal? Uh, when I drew the floor, I had to draw uh, four pink lines to get a box, and those were my extents, and that became my floor. So let's look at that. Let's go to the 3D view again. So I'm going to click on the little house up there at the top ribbon, and I'm going to turn off the shaded option here. Oops. Good. hidden line, sorry, wrong button. And the reason why I wanted to do that was to show you the pink lines. So what's going on here? Let me click on this south wall and I'm going to click Edit Profile up in my ribbon for Modify Walls. I'm going to click on Edit Profile and there are my pink lines. So what happened was I was able to click once because I already had a line. The edge of my slab was already a line and so I could use that line to tell it how long I wanted the wall to be and then it assumes a certain height. So over here in my properties dialog I've got a top constraint that says unconnected and an unconnected height of 14 feet. So that means that that wall is going to be 14 feet tall unless I change these properties and uh, that gets me my vertical pink lines here and here and the fact that I use the pick lines command to select that edge of slab gave me that pink line and that pink line. So even though I do have um, the ability to do it in one click, I don't have to. Um, as long as I'm here, I'm going to edit a corner off of this. So I'm just going to draw uh, a little diagonal there, and then I'm going to use the trim command to trim that line to that line, that line to that line, and then hit finish just to show you that I can manipulate the four pink lines. And so there you go. I've got um, a change to my wall profile. So another system family that we want to look at is a roof. I'm going to place a roof real quick on this project. Double click on the roof plan. There are my walls. Um, I go to my home ribbon. So I click the home tab. I'm on my build pane on that ribbon. Click roof. Uh, the top selection there is roof by footprint and it defaults uh, in commercial to give me a zero foot overhang and a flat roof that's made out of insulation on metal deck. And uh, that's not what I want. I'm going to change this to a generic 12 inch roof and I'm going to give it a one foot overhang and I'm going to have it be sloped. So I click on the define slope button there. Now as I click on my four walls to give it the boundaries, that dashed blue line is where my overhang is going to be. If I just click on those guys, it gets me all the way around. Um, the slope indicators say that, yeah, you're going to have a roof slope or a roof pitch on each one of these. It's going to start from the pink line and go up. So just to show you what's going on, I'm going to go ahead and click on the green check to finish that. It asks me, do you want to attach the highlighted walls to the roof? I'm going to say yes and then go and look at this in 3D and there you go that's my roof came in as a hip roof because I had slope on all four of those pink lines I want to go back into the edit roof mode uh, so that I can show you a couple of things real quick with this roof so uh, grab the roof by clicking on the edge of it I can't click in the middle of a roof and have it select I have to actually click on one of the lines that represents uh, an edge of the roof or a change in slope on the roof uh, so now I've got it selected, it's transparent, I'm going to click Edit Footprint. That gets me back to my four pink lines. So I can adjust these at this point, I can do whatever. What I want to do is change it from a hip roof to a gable roof. 
So I'm going to click on this west pink line and I'm going to change that uh, so that it does not define slope. I'm going to uh, uncheck that box. I'm going to go to the east end and do that same thing. Uncheck the box and then say OK finish. And so now I've got a gable roof instead of a hip roof. So the pink lines uh, are something that are really important in system families, uh, not so much in component families. So uh, we're going to move on. Our next video will be all about customizing system families.